Welcome back to our series on Microsoft Azure and creating a service principle using role-based access control. In our previous video, we talked about what is role-based access control and how it ties back to security principles in the Azure Active Directory in terms of authentication and authorization. So we also, I think I already said this, I think we already downloaded the Azure CLI tool. So I'm assuming that you have installed it. If you have not installed it, please watch the previous video. Make sure you have an understanding of the concepts in that video and make sure you download the Azure CLI as well before moving on to this particular video. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do first is now that the Azure CLI has been installed, we're gonna move to the next topic, which is you know, logging in. And then what we're gonna also do is walk through the process of creating a service principle using role-based access control. Now, for those of you who might have some questions or you're gonna to wanna to reference some code, I do have some examples on the repo. So if you go into the topic Azure CLI, this is under the Azure SQL data project in the samples folder and then in the resources folder, you will see topic Azure CLI. This is a readme file. This will go through just commands that I kind of found were helpful. And then we'll also talk a little bit more about Azure principles, that's misspelled. And then uh, some of the commands that you would have to go through. Additionally, I think this leaks back to, maybe this isn't the one. I think it's this one, let me check here. Okay. There's a reference here, so you can see the different things when it comes to using the Azure uh, service principles and stuff like that. So keep in mind, this is kind of its own <laughs> application and stuff like that. So don't be too concerned if it sounds like there's a lot, just take it one step at a time. But keep in mind, it, it is here. Um, this is kind of its own little, you know, what's the word? It's its own little application. So there's a lot you can do with it, but they try to do their best when it comes to, um, you know, utilizing it and documenting everything for you. So you can actually access the Azure CLI using Visual Studio Code. However, I would recommend that you install an extension before you try accessing it using Visual Studio Code. So if you go to the extensions icon on the left-hand left hand side and you go here, you type in Azure CLI and then you will see Azure CLI tools. If you click into it, I already have it installed but I would highly recommend that you install this extension because it will allow you to use the Azure CLI from Visual Studio Code and then also uh, just do different operations. So very useful, um, very helpful, and highly recommended if you want to use it using Visual Studio Code. Now, once you've done that, I'm gonna close this out. You wanna open up your terminal and you could just do Control J and then, uh, what is it, AZ login. So this is the Azure CLI command for logging in to Azure. So if you do AZ login, you are redirected. Now, if you have multiple profiles like me, you're just gonna say no, and then you would log in. Congratulations, you are now logged in to the Microsoft Azure you know, platform. <clears throat> so we did that using the Azure CLI. And you can see here that it does, you know, print out some stuff that might be helpful to us, might not be helpful to us, but regardless, it does print out some information for us. So I'm going to close that out. And then from here, we can actually go through the process of creating a service principle using role-based access control. Now, if you go back to our particular readme file inside our GitHub repository, you will see that if you go down a little bit to step two, create a service principle, this is 
uh, this command that you need to pass through. I'm going to see if this is the one that I care about. I think this is. So this partic the particular link in here, it redirects you back to the Azure for Python developers. So if you're planning to use Azure using the Python SDK, this is a very important page you're gonna to wanna to follow or I guess save to your favorites. We'll talk about this page in more detail in the next video, but inside of it, they actually walk through creating a service principle using role-based uh, access control. And so uh, really in simple terms, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's AZ, AD, create for role-based access control. So in this case, we know AZ is short for Azure. AD is Active Directory, so Azure Active Directory. And then uh, SP is means service principal and create for role-based access control means create for role-based access control. So I think this one's actually missing something. I think, yeah, it's supposed to look like this. So create, disregard this one. It's supposed to look like this. So service principle, create for role-based access control. And then there's a couple arguments that we can pass through. One is name. So this is the name of our service principle. You want to give it something meaningful, obviously, just because you're going to be referencing it and you're going to might want to be able to access it from the directory. And then there's a couple other arguments, skip assignment and then SDK auth. And then you can also specify using this little arrow the output. So if you want to save it to a JSON file, for example, you could just pass through the name of that file. So the name along with the extension. Now, if you go here, this is just finer detail about what those arguments do. So the name one obviously defines the name of your service principle. If you don't specify it, it's going to take on this generic form, which is Azure CLI along with the timestamp. So if you don't specify a name, it will automatically create one for you. Skip assignment. So argument creates a service principle with no default permissions. You must then assign specific permissions to the service principle to allow locally run code to access any resources. Different quick starts uh, and tutorials provide details for authorizing a service principle. So this can kind of help if you want to specify certain permissions right from the get-go. Normally, I just leave it as skip assignment. And then as I need to assign permissions to this role base, I mean, to the service principle, then I will do so. So normally, I, I actually provide this one. I don't want to give it any permissions unless I know upfront which ones I want to do. And then at the same time, there's this final argument, which is SDK auth. So this argument generates JSON output similar to the following values, except in this case, your ID values in secret will all be different. So if you, uh, what is it? If you do not specify this argument, your output will look like this. If you do specify SDK auth, your output will look like this. People always ask, well, what's the difference? So this one, I, I tend to do this one. I've done both, but really it does the same thing. But if you need to do things like a directory endpoint, or if you want to use it for different tokens and stuff like that, I would recommend doing this way. This one is if you're kind of doing a more specific authentication process. So you're going to actually pass through the values. Sometimes that's a little bit better, but I don't know. For me, I just, I tend to do this way. I think this is the safer way. And then again, if you need to access uh, different SDKs and stuff like that, this is a little bit straightforward to do it. And then also the information is a little bit more intuitive, client secret. Technically your password here is your client secret. You know, technically your app ID here is your client ID, so on and so on. So it's a little bit confusing, but personally, I just, I like doing this way because it's easier. So let's go and run this command. So if you want like kind of a template, I already have one here. I would recommend that you change <laughs> the name of it, obviously, because otherwise you are not going to like yourself. So I'm going to create a new file, save this here. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to call this uh, service principle 
uh, test. We'll just call it test. And then what I will do, test SP. So this is the name of my output. Now, just to be safe, I'm gonna do this where I actually have a folder op open. Otherwise, it could potentially um, not run and I don't want that. So I'm going to put it here. And then if I just put it in this wonderful little terminal, I should see some output over here in my particular folder. Wait a minute, I don't like that this one's here. Let me do it in the other one. Yeah, let me do it in this one. Oh, sorry, I just wasn't in this one. So you can kind of see here, I don't like doing it if I'm not directly in the folder because sometimes it freaks out. Is it not going to copy? Come on, <laughs> what is going on? Let's do it the old fashioned way. There we go. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, so let's grab it, copy it. We're gonna put it in our command prompt and let's go. Okay, perfect. So we can see here that a new file has been created. And then if we go inside of it, look at that. We got all sorts of fun information. So right now we have a client ID, client secret, subscription ID, and tenant ID. So this is all important information. And what we're gonna be doing with this information is we're gonna be setting up our development environment. So that way, when we want to access our resources using the Python SDK, we can save ourselves a lot of time and not have to create a bunch of different config files and then load those config files and then pass through certain arguments. We can use a more standard approach that uh, comes with the Python SDK. Now, it's very important, do not delete this file because if you forget this, guess what? You can't access it again, it's gone. So you can only access it once and once you have accessed it, you can't access it again. You would have to create a new service principle. That is why it's highly recommended that you save it to a JSON file. Additionally, you want to make sure that you uh, keep this information confidential. So even though I am showing this to you, I will be deleting it after I complete this series. The reason why is because this can now access your resources. This is the information you need to access your different resources. So your client ID, your client secret, these are all needed for authentication protocols. So um, again, save it, secure it, whatever you wanna do. If you want to see your particular, uh, what is the word? Service principle. <laughs> I don't know why I can think of it. Um, you can actually access it from the Azure portal. So. If you log into Microsoft Azure in the portal, like you've done in previous videos, and then if you have it set up like I do, you will see Azure Active Directory. If not, you can also just go up here and you can do Azure Active Directory and then just click into it and you'll be able to see it from there. So once you go in here, you will see something like this and then you'll go on the little left-hand pane. If you go down to App Registration, this is where you're going to see your service principles. So if I want to do Sigma coding test, uh, a service principle test, service principle test. Okay, perfect. So you can see the application or the client ID. And if you go into it, you can now see all the information that was outputted to our JSON file. So we have our client ID, our tenant ID, we also have an object ID. So this actually wasn't in the JSON file. You can see here, there is no E5 or whatever it is. Additionally, you can <clears throat> start looking at API permissions. You can sign in users. So they provide some information. You can see your application ID URI, a redirect URI if you want to specify one. Additionally, you can see branding, so if you wanna change the name, you can do that. If you wanna upload a logo, terms of service, privacy, I mean, you can do a lot of very specific things. You can do authentication, so if you wanna have redirect URIs and just more advanced configurations, you can. 
You have secrets. So in this case, you have a client secret, which is role-based access control. Again, it's hidden. You can't see it. Token configurations, API permissions. We can also do things along this nature. So at this point, what we're going to do is we are going to cut off the video. In our next video, we are going to talk about the Azure Python SDK, what that looks like, how we install it. And then we're going to take the information here. We're going to set up our development environment. And then we're going to walk through the process of accessing a resource, albeit a very simple resource. So in this case, it's going to be the Azure Key Vault. However, if you have any questions at this point, by all means, put them down in the comments below, and I will do my best to get back to you. Otherwise, we will see you in the next video.